industrial only. system Good has inflicted the voices of the people in the white house. So we, America, would never do a thing like this to us. We hold these truths to be self-evident: that every man and woman is created equal. In 1848, an historic, uh, an historic assembly of women gathered in Seneca Falls, New York, at the home of Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And modeling her declaration closely on the Declaration of Independence, Stanton extended it to list the grievances of women. Her declaration also called for the right of women to vote, a very radical demand, a demand that helped launch the women's suffrage movement leading ultimately in 1920 to the recognition of voting rights for women in the 19th Amendment. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The history of mankind is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations on the part of man toward woman, having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over her. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has never permitted her to exercise her inal inalienable right to the elective franchise. He has compelled her to submit to laws in the formation of which she had no voice. He has made her, if married, in the eye of the law, civilly dead. He has taken from her all right in property, even to the wages she earns. He has monopolized nearly all the profitable employments, and from those she is permitted to follow, she receives but a scanty remuneration. He closes against her all of the avenues to wealth and distinction which he considers most honorable to himself as a teacher of theology, medicine, or law, she is not known. He has denied her the facilities for obtaining a thorough education, all colleges being closed to her. He has endeavored in every way that he could to destroy her confidence in her own powers, to lessen her self-respect, and to make her willing to lead a dependent and abject life. Now, in view of this entire disfranchisement of one half of the people of this country, their social and religious degradation, in view of the unjust laws above mentioned, and because women do feel themselves aggrieved, oppressed, and fraudulently deprived of their most sacred rights. We insist that they have immediate admission to all the rights and privileges that belong to them as citizens of the United States. In entering upon the great work before us, we anticipate no small amount of misconception, misrepresentation, and ridicule but we shall use every instrumentality within our power to effect our 